Jeff Groves, member of the Texas rock band Small Stars, an American with Irish, Native American, and French blood in his veins. Up until 2009, he's lived the carefree life of a rock musician. But one day, as it often happens to his kind of people, Jeff left everything behind, got on the Big Iron Bird, and landed. Well, he finally landed in Sofia, Bulgaria. Bulgaria, Eastern Europe. The story you're about to see has already happened before. Magan, it's unexpected for me. I'd seen streets and boulevards abroad named after many Americans. Washington, Roosevelt, Kennedy, Reagan, even Elvis. But I'd never heard of this Magan. He was not popular in my home country, the United States. I was intrigued. What had this American, quite unknown in his own country, done to deserve that honor in Bulgaria, Eastern Europe? I made an investigation. In 1876, 100 years after the American Declaration of Independence was written, Bulgarians rose up against the Ottoman Turks' empire. The Ottoman Empire had conquered the Balkans 500 years earlier and taken away all the basic human rights of the Christian population there. In the 19th century, however, the sultans were forced to part with the larger portion of their European possessions. In late April, 1876, following an insurrection, the Bulgarians proclaimed their independence from the empire. The uprising was brutally crushed by the Turkish state. Over 30,000 Bulgarians were killed most of them women, children, and old men. The Ottoman atrocities were publicly condemned in Europe. In order to investigate the situation, an American journalist came to Bulgaria, Januarius Aloysius Magan, a reporter for the world's most popular newspaper, the New York Herald, and the London paper, Daily News, founded by Charles Dickens. Magan, a close friend of the American Consul General in Constantinople, Eugene Schuyler, and of the popular Russian general, Mikhail Skobolev, the white general. They had been brothers in arms in Central Asia. When they met, Skobolev was a lieutenant colonel in the Russian army, Schuyler was in the diplomatic corps, and Magan was a war correspondent. In 1876, the consul general invited Magan to join a group of diplomats, the Brit, Walter Baring, the Russian prince, Alexei Tsaretelev, the Frenchman, Alban Rosé, and Schuyler himself, to visit the communities where the uprising had been most brutally crushed. One of the villages stricken with the most vileness was Batak. Before the uprising, its population had been 7,000 people. After the violent defeat of the rebels, which the European press and the historians later called the Batak Massacre, only about 2,000 people survived. The others were slaughtered by the hastily formed army of irregular Muslim soldiers, the Bashibazuk. The literal meaning of Bashibazuk in Turkish is damaged head. The Bashibazuk troops were made up of Bulgarian Muslims. Under the encouraging eyes of the Turkish authorities and with their help, Bulgarians were slaughtered by Bulgarians. Because of the uprising, the Turks' brutal internal politics and Magan's reports, Russia declared war on the Ottoman Empire and utterly defeated the armies in less than a year. For the Bulgarians, it's a war for their liberation. After the Russian victory, Bulgaria finally reappeared on the political map of Europe. Magan reported from the hotspots of the military operation. He was right by the side of his friend, Mikhail Skobolev, the white general. The American reporter died of typhus in Sadegrad, aged 34. His remains were later transported to New Lexington, Ohio. The Bulgarian immigrants in the States put the inscription, Liberator of Bulgaria, on his gravestone. A liberator of Bulgaria. I'm really impressed. The Bulgarians are a truly grateful people. They called a simple military correspondent a liberator. Because he fought for their freedom, if not with regiments and cannons, with his pen at least. Books are one thing, 
but I'd like to see how things actually looked a century and a half ago. They say that the atmosphere in Batak and the nature haven't changed at all. Right before we reach Batak, I meet a fellow American, Swain Uber. He has been living for quite a while now in the village of Fotinovo, near Batak, and knows all the old stories. He will be my guide in the history and nature of the region. McGahan's reports were reprinted in several foreign newspapers, and they ended up turning the public opinion in Great Britain. But at the same time, Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli said that Britain's greatness is through its tough, no-nonsense foreign policy that puts its own interest above the moral law. And it turned Bulgaria's fate around? Yes, it did. It, it ended up making Great Britain withdraw its support from the Ottoman Empire and its actions against the Christian Balkan peoples. Januarius Megahan, liberator of Bulgaria. Here is how Megahan described his first impressions of Batak. We at last emerged from a thick wood into a delightful little valley that spread out a rich carpet of verdure before our eyes. A little stream came murmuring down through it, upon which there was built a miniature sawmill. This little valley with its rich grassy slopes ought to have been covered with herds of sheep and cattle. Although he was an experienced war correspondent, he couldn't even have imagined what he was about to see in just a couple of hours. Later, he named his reports the Valley of the Tearless. The present day name of the town, Batak, comes from the Turkish word Batakluk, which means swamp or marsh. Near the town, there was a large boggy lake. Few people knew the safe way through the fogs. A few years after the April uprising, the humorous five-line poems called limericks became very popular in Great Britain. It is said that they originated in the Irish country of Limerick. One of the famous authors of limericks was George Bernard Shaw, who was a contributor to Dickens' newspaper, The Daily News, where McGahan worked. Here is a typical macabre limerick story from the English Channel of an unfortunate man that no one felt sorry for. There was an old person of Dover who rushed through a field of blue clover, but some very large bees stung his nose and his knees, so he very soon went back to Dover. On several occasions, Januarius Magan compared the dire lot of the Bulgarians from the Rodopis with that of the Irish. There was not a roof left, not a whole wall standing. All was a mass of ruins from which arose, as we listen, a low, plaintive wail, like the keening of the Irish over their dead, that filled the little valley and gave it voice. We had the explanation of a thin, curious sound when we afterwards descended into the village. One of the most despairing Bulgarian idioms used today is zabatachvane, meaning a deadlock or a terrible plight. In short, it is the worst situation of hopelessness a Bulgarian could be in. Right before the massacre, Batak could easily be compared to any prosperous town in Europe. Here's how Magahan described it. I think people in England and Europe generally have a very imperfect idea of what these Bulgarians are. I have always heard them spoken of as mere savages, who were in reality not much more civilized than the American Indians. I was astonished to learn that there is scarcely a Bulgarian village without its school. They are supported by a voluntary tax levied by the Bulgarians on themselves. The instruction given in these schools is gratuitous and that all profit alike by it, poor as well as rich. There's scarcely a Bulgarian child that cannot read and write. And finally, that the percentage of Bulgarians that can read and write is as great as in England and France. Do the people who speak of these Bulgarians as savages happen to be aware of these facts? Again, I had thought that the burning of a Bulgarian village meant the burning of a few mud huts. I was very much astonished to find that the majority of these villages are in reality well-built towns with solid stone houses, and that there are in all of them a comparatively large number of people who have attained to something like comfort and that some of the villages might stand a not very unfavorable comparison with an English or French village. The truth is that these Bulgarians, instead of the savages we have taken them for, are in reality a hardworking, industrious, honest, 
civilized and peaceful people. The April Uprising of 1876 broke out almost simultaneously throughout the territory that is now Bulgaria. Batak rose too. The locals threw off the yoke of the Sultan and informed the Muslims from the nearby villages of that fact. The local Muslims accepted the change in the political situation and pleaded for mercy. The rebels spared their lives. For about 15 days, Batak was independent. And then, the village was surrounded by the Bashi Bazouk troops, led by Ahmad Aga Barutan Lieta, a Bulgarian Muslim and a district police chief. Ahmad Aga promised to spare the lives of the insurgents if they laid down their weapons. Some of the rebels believed him and disarmed, and were slaughtered. Those who fought the Muslim troops were slaughtered as well. The Bashi Bazouk turned Batak into a scene of utter annihilation and plundering. Here's the House of Horrors, a stone fortress where death abides. Magan told the world about it. Hundreds of people who sought shelter in the church were killed. This place is haunted. The St. Nadelia Church, in early May, 1876, the churchyard and the building itself were packed with desperate, ill-armed men, women, and children. Few of them were going to come out alive. The attackers were merciless. Over 2,000 people were massacred. After the foreign diplomats visited Batak in August 1876, they wrote in their reports that the whole yard and the church were filled with corpses. The bodies were piled up as high as the church fence. The people killed here were martyrs of the faith. They did not hide in this church because of its thick stone walls or strong doors. They were seeking God's protection, God's shelter. But alas, God did not help them. They probably cried out in their last hour, like Jesus from the cross. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Englishman, Walter Baring, wrote, Ahmed Aga and his men can be credited with what is probably the most despicable crime committed in this century. After the massacre at Kampur, the British Empire ordered that the arrested rebels be shot with cannons. Unlike those events, after the 1876 uprising, the Bulgarians returned here, and upon receiving independence from the Ottoman Empire, continued to live here together with the Turks. They forgave, but they never forgot. Today, the Bulgarian present-day musketeers pay homage to the victims. The uniform of the Bulgarian guardsmen is a replica of the uniform worn by Hristo Botev's revolutionaries. Botev can be described as the Byron of Bulgaria, a romantic poet devoted to the concept of freedom. Botev and his men came from Romania in order to take part in the April uprising, but they arrived after the insurrection had already been crushed. The majority of the 200 revolutionaries were killed, including Botev himself. The St. Nadelia Church is a holy place for Bulgarians. Every Bulgarian kid has been here at least once, as a student in elementary school. But today is a special day, April 3rd, 2011. We're leaving Batak for the capital, Sofia. An unprecedented event is about to take place. The Bulgarian Orthodox Church is about to canonize the martyrs from Batak and declare them to be saints, all of them. Glorification is an extremely rare act in the Eastern Orthodox Church. The last time a Christian was declared a saint was 47 years ago. Today, all Bulgarian bishops are gathered in the St. Alexander Nevsky Cathedral as well as many state officials and ordinary believers. The Valley of the Tearless is now a Valley of Saints. They have been waiting 135 years for this moment, but heaven knows no time.
Six weeks later, the sanctified icon of the new saints is back in Batak. The crucession turned into one of the most impressive events for the Orthodox world. 50 archbishops from all over the country came to Batak to take part in it. Over 300 priests arrived from the Plovdiv eparchy alone. And because family ties are especially strong in Batak, there is hardly a citizen who is not directly related to a saint today. The Dormition of the Theotokos Church is another noteworthy church in Batak. Its construction began 100 years ago, and its architect is an engineer of Czech-Bulgarian descent, Josef Schnitter. He provided valuable expert assistance to the Russian troops during the war against the Ottomans. The people of Batak have always felt very kindly toward the Russians. The golden dome you see over there is the dome of the St. Michael the Archangel Chapel. It was built in the Russian style with money donated by Russians. A century and a half later, the nature around Batak and the atmosphere of the town seem unaffected by the years. Batak municipality is located in southern Bulgaria on the slopes of the Rodopi Mountains. The average elevation of the area is about 1,000 meters above sea level. The town of Batak is surrounded by hills. Rivers run down the mountain. Lakes mirror the skies. Forests and meadows spread their lush greenery far and wide. This landscape reminds me of Scotland. Around every corner, I expect an ancient castle to appear. Obviously, Magan's Appalachian heart would have been moved at such a sight. Was he prepared for the horror that he would face after such beauty? At this altitude, the climate is usually harsher, but Batak is located in a river valley, surrounded by mountains. A warm southern wind blows up from the Aegean Sea. The locals call it the White Wind, because in Bulgarian, the Aegean is known as the White Sea. White Wind, White Sea. The nature here is amazing. According to NASA research data, this region has one of the world's highest number of sunny days. Maybe the reason is the extremely high purity of the air. Here you can observe one of the rarest phenomena on the planet, air ionization. Ions are called the vitamins of air. This is the only place on the entire Balkan Peninsula where this strange plant grows, the shrubby sink foil. It is an extremely fastidious plant. You can find it distributed throughout the Northern Hemisphere, but only in a few specific locations. The botanist Carl Linnaeus, the first to divide flora and fauna into orders and families, found it on the Swedish island of Gotland and gave it its name. The shrubby sinkfoil is also found in Siberia and North America. Why did it choose this specific part of the Balkans? This remains a mystery, a plant with attitude. And the formidable city of the ants, astounding insects with such a complex social organization that sometimes I wonder why they still tolerate us on their planet. I need to get back to nature. Wasn't I supposed to go on a walk around here? I can see the old Indian side you waking up. Let's go meet the wild animals. There are five protected areas on the territory of Batak Municipality. They are particularly important, as forests cover most of the municipality's area. We'll start with Beglika State Hunting Preserve. 
It is here where the shrubby cinquefoil grows. But in this region, there are dozens of other plant species listed in the Red Book, some of which can only be found in the Rodopi Mountains. Even the names of these highland dwellers have a romantic feel about them. Marsh gladiolus, purple marsh locks, alpine snowbell, northern bedstraw. The highest point in the hunting preserve is the third highest peak in the Rodopis, Syutkia, 2,186 meters above sea level. On a clear day, you can see the Aegean Sea from it. The lowest point is 1,527 meters, the waters of the Golyam Beglik Dam. Amidst the heights of the mountain, the dam lakes are rather like inner seas. There is even a real gulf here. The Blue Gulf is a haven for all those who can still hear the call of the wild. These woods abound in various wildlife as the boreal forests of Canada and the rivers and dam lakes are teeming with fish. Among the kings of the fauna are the red deer, wild cat, roe deer, wolf, and wild boar. But this was just the beginning. We're on our way to Beglika Dam. It is seven kilometers long with maximum depth of 43 meters which is the exact depth of the Sea of Galilee, where Christ walked on the water, according to the Bible. Our next stop is Shiroka Boyana, the water realm. Three rivers have their sources here, and there are four dams and lakes in the area. This reminds me of the States. Here they call these American trout. But trout is too trivial a fish in the water realm. Here you can legally catch barbel, European perch, beluga, common carp, mullet, silver carp, common rood, gudgeon, zander, even pike. And since Shiroko Poyana is the fish realm, it is also bear heaven. There are massive specimens in these woods. Not as scary as the grizzlies of the Rockies, but dangerous enough. If you come across cubs, don't try to play with them. Run. Their mother will probably turn out to be close by. We're going northwards. Rodopi Game Breeding Center. But no matter in which direction we're traveling, no matter how wild the scenery looks, we're never more than 180 kilometers away from the Sofia airport. And if you happen to spend the last day of your mountain trip in the Rodopi Game Breeding Center, don't forget to pick some of the famous lingonberries or bilberries for your friends. They are so big here that your foot could get caught in one and you could fall. In this preserve, you could also get a glimpse of some pine martens, beech martens, or wild goats, scarcely seen elsewhere in Europe. Batak State Forestry. This is the garden of giant trees. The average age of the sky-high spruces, firs, black, and Scots pines is over 130 years, which means that some of them witnessed the April uprising, and others were planted right after the liberation of Bulgaria. Among the trees, on the wild Alps, mouflins grays, a subspecies of the wild sheep that are considered exotic even in Bulgaria, as well as deer. The last forestry we're visiting is Borovo. It's like a miniature Jurassic Park, but only if you have left your shoes in one of the luxurious rooms in the guest house. You must tread very quietly here. The capercalis, snipes, and wood pigeons here are almost as big as their ancestors, the dinosaurs. Literally huge, but unlike the ancient reptiles, very easily frightened. And if you look hard enough, there's a chance to see an eagle, falcon, or hawk soaring in the sky above. But Borovo is best known for the beautiful deer. As you can see, I'm an excellent marksman, although I prefer to shoot with a camera. 
I still get my trophies, but without killing any animals. Yes, even on the Balkan Peninsula, you don't really need to kill everything that moves, despite all the traditions that you already know. Six kilometers away from here is the village of Fotinovo. It is sometimes called the God Forsaken Village, which is probably not so bad, considering that the people who live there pray to different gods. The village itself is divided into three separate neighborhoods, the upper, middle, and lower. See, the interesting thing about this village is that 50% is Bulgarian, and then the other 50% Bulgarians of Turkish descent, but they all live together harmoniously. But Fotinovo, they say, is the opposite of Yugoslavia. It is an example of centuries of peaceful coexistence of different ethnicities. It's situated 1,100 meters above sea level. The village is divided into four quarters, and the larger part of it rests on the sunny bank of the Fotinska River. The Romans built numerous stone roads in the area and connected the Thracian settlement, Basapara, with the Aegean Sea. The Camara Bridge in the Ginevra area was built on a Roman road as well. The legend says that centuries ago, timber merchants from Genoa used it. This is where the area got its name. The Camara Bridge was built in the late 16th century over the remains of the old Roman bridge. It is remarkable how harmoniously it fits its surroundings. Romans passing through here must have seen the exact same thing. Fotinovo was mentioned in Ottoman documents as early as 1576. Yeah, stop to look at this roof here. Before, the local people would build their roofs out of slate as opposed to clay tiles. But the skill has disappeared. And now Fotinvos was one of the few places where you can actually find these 200-year-old houses. Nature is just as important to the people of Batak today as it was in the 16th century, when they first started settling here. What attracted them to this place was the abundance of wood. In the 19th century, there were over 200 lumber mills in the area. It's not very different today. They used to call them charks. Chark is a Persian word that means mechanism. Even today, many areas have the word chark in their name. The word has been around a long time, but the charks are modern now, often American. The third village in the municipality, Nova Mahala, is very close by. The locals believe they are descendants of the Yuruks, a nomadic Turkic people. Between the 14th and the 20th century, Yuruks settled in the most beautiful mountain areas from Asia Minor to Europe. The oldest known name of the village is Yaniji Jumaya, the new neighborhood. The population is entirely Muslim. Muslims call this sanctuary Hutbe. There is no grave here. It is blessed by the invisible presence of Asan Hoja, a saint, or as the Turks say, Evliya, a valley of saints. That is why the area is called Evliya Baba, or the Holy Father. Miracles happen here. The water that flows from the spring cures sickness, infertility. Horse riding is a very common way to get around in Nova Mahala and Fotinovo. The Tsigov Chark Resort. It is a unique combination of altitude of over 1,000 meters above sea level, an artificial lake, vast meadows, ski tracks, and bicycle tracks. 
The dam lake was built on the place of the legendary Batak Swamp. It is about nine kilometers long and over 30 meters at its deepest. This is how I imagine the angler's heaven. Over 10 species of fish could be caught in the waters of the dam all year round. Prehistoric beasts must lurk in these waters. The Loch Ness Monster lives in a similar lake. Monsters actually do lurk in these waters. They say one time a young diver went down to check the dam wall. He came back up, his hair was white. He said there were catfish the size of hippos down there, but they gotta be pretty smart monsters because he hasn't been able to catch one just yet. I'm going home to Batak. The town square is sunny and everyone seems friendly, but let's see if the local Highlanders will fancy some music from an instrument constructed in the most level part of Europe, Belgium. The saxophone was patented in Belgium 10 years before the April uprising. You are a true liberator, or as your patron Dickens put it, liberty, equality, fraternity, or death. The last much the easiest to bestow, O oh guillotine. You have chosen to help Batak, here where people chose the Yatagan over slavery. My choice is very simple, to be free like you and the other people of the mountain. I left America for Bulgaria. Why don't you leave your big city for Batak, just for a while? Sofia, Houston, don't wait up. Thank <laughs> you. 